Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the deep to points node. So again, this is second day. We're going to be talking about deep pixel information. So we've got our little deep pixel multi-layer uh, EXR that we had. Ooh, let's look at the gamut node of our grass that we uh, were talking about yesterday. And we want to turn this into deep pixel information. So the first node we're going to need is the deep to points node. So let's go ahead and add that. And the deep to points node is going to take this deep pixel information and turn it into actual 3D points for us to manipulate or use or uh, composite into our scene however we want. So we're going to input this into our merge 3D. And we're going to bring in our deep pixel information and bring it into our deep to points node. And if we look here, you can see nothing exciting has happened. It's just a flat little image. But if we were to bring in a 3D camera, which this node requires, and input it into the camera input, now you can see we've got our deep pixel data right there. And it's in line, but it's upside down and it's backwards. So this is just because Blender brought it in backwards because our Z up, Y up, all that stuff is different. So all we need to do to change that is after a gamut node, we can bring in a D transform or a deep pixel transform node and our deep pixel transform. All we have to do is on our scale Z right here, let's just make that minus one. And now our information is in there. And if we go to our render node, and look, you can see we don't see anything yet. That's because on our deep pixel node or our deep two points node, one of our check boxes is make renderable. So in order to see anything that's happening in here, we have to select this make renderable. And it's there, you can barely see it. So let's go up to our density. Another option on our deep to points node is our density. And it's a slider. So we can have negative density and we can have positive density. And this node max density as at one or 100%. You can't go above one. So to fix what's going on here, and if we zoom in, we can kind of see what's happening. Our first problem is we have this anti-leasing checkbox checked. So some of our blades of grass, you can see are missing and it look transparent. That's because uh, it's attempting to anti-alias all these pixels. So if we disconnect that, or uncheck it, you can see we've got all of our info back. But now the problem is our points are too small, so our grass in our image isn't filled in correctly. So if we go to our size up here, we can uh, change the size of our grass or the size of our pixels to our grass looks correct. So we can really zoom in here and uh, make sure we get it exactly where it needs to be. So it's looking correct. And there we go. So now we've got our grass and our little uh, footage there. And it's looking good. And it is deep pixel information. So if we look, you can see our grass is spread across. And if we go back to our deep to points node, our style is whether we want points or whether we want crosses. And it's going to depend on the look that you're trying to get but this is what crosses do. We're gonna go ahead and leave it on points. And down here we have default color. So if we uncheck use per point colors, which is brought in from our deep pixel data, we can change the color of our graphs, or we can select use per point colors to use that actual data that's coming in. And down here, We've already covered make renderable unseen by camera means if we're looking at our camera and we want it unseen, it is unseen. And then down here is the camera we're going to be using. So if we have multiple cameras in our scene and it's uh, having problems, you can just specifically select what camera we have connected to our deep to points node. And then on our deep to points node and our transform, none of these options are really going to work because we're getting our information our pixel data from here. 
So if you remember right, if we were on our gamut node, and we go to our channel, we have all this information. So our positions are already being dictated by this position X, Y, and Z for all these points. So if we go to our deep to points node and we try to transform, it's really not gonna transform anything but the entire scene. So if I look in our scene and I hit our transform button, it's gonna appear as though nothing's happening because it's locked to that camera. Same with my rotation, nothing's happening. But if we look at our merge node and we rotate, we can see it's actually rotating, but it's rotating with our camera. But that position X, Y, and Z data coming from here is locking it to that camera. So in our render, it's not gonna look any different. Now, one thing to remember is we went over the image to deep node yesterday. So if we look at our merge node and see how our uh, deep pixel data is being uh, translated into our camera, if I was to actually connect and image to deep, you notice nothing is going to happen. So this isn't changing anything when we have that deep pixel data already coming in from our open EXR. So I can remove this and not use it if I don't need to. So that is the deep two points node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.